Welcome to the Victorian Chamber of Commerce and Industry. My name is Anton Zitnik. I'm a Senior Occupational Health and Safety Consultant with the Chamber. I'll be talking about the various ways that your employees' mental health may be impacted during the current crisis, discussing some core principles around leadership and crisis communication. I'll be refreshing some general principles around how to support the mental health of your employees, and also some strategies around how to manage the mental health of a remote workforce. The coronavirus crisis is a challenging time for all of us. There are a wide range of stressors that we are all challenged by to varying degrees at the moment that are going to affect the mental health of your employees during this time. Probably the biggest one at the moment is job uncertainty. Some of us may have lost work overnight, others may still be in work but uncertain every day about what the future is going to bring. The current crisis also presents us with a range of other challenges. As human beings, we derive comfort from certainty, predictability, routines, and many of us have found that our routines have been completely disrupted in our day-to-day -day life at the moment. We may find that work we were doing yesterday that was important and meaningful to us has been put on hold or doesn't seem so important in the current climate. Many people around the world at the moment have been directed to stay at home, and this brings with it the possibility of additional carers' responsibilities and increased family conflict. We also need to remember that, according to the Australian Bureau of Statistics, approximately one in five Australians suffer from a mental health condition in any given year. The current crisis is likely to exacerbate pre-existing conditions and also cause new conditions in previously healthy individuals. So let's talk now about the ways you can support your employees during the current crisis. Strong leadership and clear regular communication are two of the most important factors here. Every day when we wake up, we're naturally keen to get up-to-date information about what's happening in the world, what's happening in our country, and also in our local community. In addition to this, we also want to understand what is happening at my employer. What is the plan? What are the key things I need to be aware of? If you're a member and you need assistance developing your business plan during the coronavirus crisis, we strongly advise you to give the helpline a call and talk with one of our consultants. If you're not a member, I'd encourage you to take up the Victorian Chamber's free 12-month membership offer by going to our website. Once you have a plan for your business in place, it's critically important that you have a centralised crisis management team and that you communicate with your staff regularly. You want your communications team to be communicating at least every second day and be a trusted, reliable source of information for your employees. One of the risks for a business in any sort of crisis situation is that information spreads quickly via gossip, rumour and hearsay. You can avoid this not only by communicating regularly, but also by being honest and authentic in the way you communicate. It's important to communicate regularly with your staff even if you don't have all the answers at any given point in time. The overall tone of your communication needs to be sincere and authentic. It's important to acknowledge the uncertainty and the anxiety that this unprecedented situation has created for all of us. Try to avoid using highly technical or legalistic language. Communicate in a simple, straightforward way using plain language. One of the principles of good crisis communication is also to be honest when you don't know something. As we get through the coming days, weeks and months, there may be many questions your employees have that you simply don't have the answers to. It is important though to give your employees time frames, to give them some idea when the information they're seeking will be available, when you'll have the answers to the questions they're seeking answers to. You should also do everything you can to share and direct your employees to share reliable sources of information. One of the challenges with this crisis that is increasing people's anxiety is that there's simply so much misinformation flying about. It's important to encourage your employees to access high quality sources of information, such as from various Australian government websites, the World Health Organisation, smarttraveller.gov.au, sites like that. In addition to strong leadership and good communication, there are plenty of things you can do to support the mental health of individual employees. Firstly, you need to be aware of employees in your business who may have pre-existing mental health conditions. Some of these you may know about through previous disclosure, and you should also prepare yourself for an increase in disclosure. Inevitably, you'll be making adjustments to the duties of many of your employees during this period, and you may need to give additional consideration to employees who have pre-existing medical conditions and take their restrictions into account. Now is also a good time to promote resources that your employees can access both externally and internally. If you have an employee assistance program, promote it. Make sure your employees are familiar with the range of services they can access and how to access them. You may also have internal resources available that you can promote at this point, such as health and wellbeing champions, health and safety reps, contact officers, people like that. Another really important thing to consider at this point is how your employees are going to stay connected socially. Just think for a moment about the amount of social connection that would go on in a typical workplace on any given day. The way people greet each other and share information in the mornings, the kind of conversations that go on in the coffee room, 
these interactions and the social connectedness that comes with it is a huge part of what makes work such an important factor in our lives. So the question in these times is, with so many employees out of the workplace, working remotely or maybe not working at all at the moment, how are you going to achieve this social connectedness? This is a great opportunity to empower your employees, to get them to come up with ideas about how they can stay socially connected with their team members. There are so many ways to do this, such as video conferencing for team meetings, establishing a buddy system, but it's a great opportunity to get your employees involved and come up with ideas about what's going to work for them. Another powerful thing you can do is look for opportunities and encourage your employees to look for opportunities in this crisis. There may be projects that your employees can work on, such as improving internal processes or planning for the recovery period that are going to give them a sense of meaning and purpose during these times. There may be some opportunities to complete training or to upskill in different areas of the business that weren't a priority during normal business operations. This resource from the Mental Health Foundation in the UK provides a good written summary of some of the things I've talked about in the last five minutes. There are also some key things you should be doing to support the mental health of your employees, whether during this crisis or during normal business operations. These are the topics that we cover in detail during our mental health training sessions for managers. In summary, you need to be looking out for the early warning signs of poor mental health in your employees. This is challenging to do if your employees are working remotely at the moment, but the same principles apply. Looking for things like erratic and out-of-character behaviour, sudden changes in appearance, deterioration of work performance, these can all be signs that one of your employees is struggling with poor mental health. If you notice these early warning signs of poor mental health in one of your employees, it's critically important to ask them how they are and how you can support them. Again, these are topics that we cover in detail in our trainings, but the basics here are open communication, non-judgmental language, linking your employee in with the appropriate support services, scheduling follow-up conversations, and making modifications to their duties so they've got the best chance to be able to remain at work or return to work if they're currently off work. This page from the Heads Up website is an excellent resource for managers which will take you through the main points you need to consider prior to sitting down with your employee and initiating a mental health conversation. Many of you who are listening to this will also have employees who are currently working remotely. Working remotely presents mental health challenges at the best of times, and many of us now are in situations where our employees are working remotely who may not necessarily have chosen to do so during normal business operations. If you are managing remote workers at the moment, think about the best medium in which to communicate with them. Video is always preferable, after that comes phone conversation, and after that various forms of text communication such as emails, messages, and things like that. Video communication is always the best option if possible because it gives the person we're talking to the opportunity to pick up on things like non-verbal cues, body language, facial expressions. It's the closest thing we have to being in a room and actually talking with someone face to face. As a manager with remote workers, you also need to dedicate more time to checking in with your employees just to see how they're doing. When you're managing employees remotely, it can be tempting to use the time you have with them to focus exclusively on work-related aspects, such as the projects they're working on or the deadlines that are upcoming. It's critically important that you make time with your employees to check in with them, just to see how they're doing, to inquire about their health and well-being. And as I said earlier, this is a great opportunity to get ideas from your team about how social connectivity can be maintained in the digital world. Every individual is different and every team communicates differently, but what are some ideas that your team has about how to stay socially connected during these challenging times? Another really important point that comes up when we're talking about remote work is the importance of establishing daily routines. This is important for yourself if you're working remotely, but also to instill in your employees. This could include things like dedicating a specific area of your home as a work area to the extent that that's possible. It could also mean working during set times and minimising external distractions during those times. Some people like to get dressed in their work clothes even though they're not commuting to the office. Others use apps to play ambient office noise in the background while they're working. It's a very individual thing. Building your own routine and encouraging others to do the same is a great way to establish a sense of normality in these unprecedented times. Please contact the Victorian Chamber if you have any questions about how to manage the health, safety and well-being of your employees during the coronavirus crisis. Thanks very much for listening.